Hi there, Phil Simbarg for the USB GF. Red to play 4 2. How do you play it? Money game. Blue holds the 2 cube. And red has to come in with the 4. Where's your 2? Now, of course, because of the quiz factor, I'm sure you're looking at the possibility of hitting here. Because if it wasn't the possibility that maybe you should hit here, why are we even looking at this position? Over the board, honestly, um, good players would see the possibility of hitting here. And just about all intermediate or lower level players would automatically make this play without even looking at the hit uh, and ruling it out. So my goal is for you to be cognizant of what we call the banana split I like to call it the suicide split because sometimes it's going to be suicide to hit here but from now on hopefully you'll see that as a possible play now that you see the option of possibly hitting honestly would you consider it is it something that you would do it's scary let's take a look at it if you get hit back it looks like you can get gammoned quite a bit uh, if you get hit back, it looks like you're probably going to lose most of the time. Do you know exactly how many times you get hit back? Again, good players instantly know that you get hit back 20 times. There are 11 ways to roll a 1. There are 11 ways to roll a 3. That's 22. But you can't count 1, 3 both times. When you counted the 11 ways to roll the 1, and then you start counting all the 3s, don't count 3, 1, and 1, 3. So instead of 11 and 11 for 22, you have 11 and 9 for 20. You should know, of course, that there's 36 rolls of the dice. If you're going to get hit 20 times, there's 16 times that you miss. 20 from 36 leaves 16. The other thing I know is there are four points made, and 4 times 4 is 16. So I know that 16 times blue doesn't come in. If there were three points made, 3 times 3 is 9. There would be 9 rolls where blue doesn't come in. If there were two points made, two times two is four. There would only be four rolls that blue doesn't come in. So these shortcuts you should know also. Now let's get down to the point. Would you hit here or not? It's very scary and very, very correct in this position. Let's take a look. Not hitting is what we would call maybe a double blunder. Oh, wait a minute. It's down here. <laughs> Here's the... Looks like to be the highest non-hitting roll. Let's compare that to the hitting roll. and Let's highlight them and put them in plus plus, get a better evaluation. Not hitting is just a total give up play. When you hit, you win the game about two thirds of the time. When you don't hit, you win the game a little more than one third of the time. I mean, that's a huge swing to hit. Now, of course, when you hit, there's a chance that you'll get gammon more. How big a chance is it really? Look at this. Look at this. When you don't hit, you actually get gammoned more than when you do hit. How can that be? How can that be? Well, number one, remember this axiom. You never get gammoned on the games that you win. So just by increasing the number of games that you're going to lose, you by definition get gammoned more. You can't get gammoned when you win the game. Those 20 games that he misses, of course, you don't win every one of those 20 games, but you win most of them when he doesn't hit. We'll look at that in a second. That's number one. And number two is even after you got hit, what if you roll a four? You're not going to get gammon that much. What if you roll a one and anchor on the east point? That's going to reduce your gammons quite a bit. Even if you don't anchor, what if he doesn't make the point very soon? What if he can't hit you on the next roll or if he hits you and you hit back? You're not always gammoned. And even if you are gammoned a tremendous amount, remember, in a money game and at most normal match scores in a match, Gammons are only worth half as much as winning and losing the game. Now let's look about let's look in more detail at the hit. What I like to do is put it on final. Let's see what happens when you don't hit. What are his bad rolls here? What what rolls does he hit? First of all, every six is killer. He gets out of here and you're gonna be hard pressed to win there. So there's eleven good numbers. What non sixes are there? Every other non six is going to hit this checker. If he doesn't roll a six, a five will hit this checker. A four hits this checker. A 
two hits this checker. A one hits that checker. Looks like threes don't hit. Uh, and um, of course he doesn't really want to hit off of here and give away this build. Looks like five three is a real bad roll. Um, but three one hits, three two hits, three three uh, hits from here. One, two, three, four. Three, four hits. Three, five is bad. Three, six doesn't hit, but comes out with a six. So looks like he doesn't have hardly anything that doesn't either get out or hit. When he hits, of course you can hit him back, but the majority of the time you don't. And he's probably a winner and can double you out when you miss. Let's take a look at dice distribution to help you to see if what I just said is true, makes any sense. Um, let's right click and go to dice distribution and sure enough 5-3 is the only roll that's good for you when he rolls it. Everything else, uh, these are all his pointing numbers. These are numbers that point on you. Double one, two one, double four all make this point. Double two makes that point. So those are his best rolls. He has some, and those put him way over the top better than 80 percent and he's got some pretty good rolls when he rolls a six in fact these are great rolls if on the next roll after he rolls a six you don't hit him then he's got a very very strong game and then all these other rolls that just hit once that's what they do how do we know that he's going to hit once with them we can look at the details and you can see how they play how how they play you can see that with a 5-5 five, five. with a 4-2 he's hitting uh, well, for two points but here's the six rolls and then here's the nine six the nine six rolls like four three three one three two wow hitting twice with those numbers and his really bad numbers like a five two and five one still hit loose and double three as I said hits loose sixteen to four so you can see how they're played here save a lot of time and trouble trying to figure out how how the game plays out so that's what happens when you don't hit. When you do hit, let's look at dice distribution. Now, when you do hit, let's see what it looks like. Why isn't it showing the hitting play? Arrow. Uh, oh, you're not on the bar. I'd already brought it in. When you are on the bar and you hit, um and let's put it on final let's look at dice distribution and let's look at the graph first because that's the easy way it's pretty obvious here's the 16 dances and here's the 20 hits you're in big trouble when he hits but you're a big big winner now here's a real good thing to look at this is this i really like to do highlight both of them right click and look at the dice distribution side by side this is what happens when you hit you're a big winner 16 times, a big loser 20 times. When you don't hit, you're still a pretty big loser. Uh, looks like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9 times you're a pretty big loser anyway. So you're a pretty big loser 16 times. You're 9 times a pretty big loser anyway. So the other 7 that total 16, you're in trouble. And all of the rest of the rolls he's a favorite. There's nothing here where you can see where you're in really great shape and a big favorite in this game. So you're giving up this chance to be a big favorite so much of the time it's worth it for this downside. You'll average out well ahead. How do you average out? After the hitting your average equity is minus two five seven and if you don't hit your average equity is minus four seven six. You're twice as bad off overall on average. Now Again, who who can work out these numbers over the board? I don't think anybody in the world can. Can go through all the rolls, figure out the equity, and work this out, even if they had five hours to do it. Uh, you, you really have to be a computer. But your eyeball can catch the fact that you have many, many really great rolls and chances to win. And you can see going forward how this looks. So that's one way to understand this position. There's other ways that you can understand this position better. And one of the better ways to understand it is by looking at variations. Let's take go back to the original. And let's say that you had oh, a chance to 
Well, let's say you rolled a 4-3, and instead of having to hit, you could make this point. Would you still do the suicide play if you rolled a 4-3 here? What do you think? The suicide hit or the banana split hit? Okay, think through it. What's the big difference in the play? The big difference, let's take a look at if you don't hit here and see where you are now. Now, the only thing that really hurts you are the 11 sixes. The rest of the rolls, you still might attack them next time. You still will have or probably have an outside shot. You are up in the race after this play. Of course, it's his roll, but you're still slightly winning the race, and this checker isn't out of here. So you only have really 11 rolls that hit you and that hurt you really bad, and um, you still have 20 rolls that hurt you really bad if you hit. So it's pretty obvious, I think, that if you would rolled a 4-3 here, that you would make the point. Let's see. And the hit would be a huge, huge error. So you're looking at the, the alternative plays, the comparative plays. You didn't have this opportunity with the 4-2 to make that point. So that's another way to compare the plays. Uh, there's lots of other things you can do to compare. Uh, it, does he have a, a blot in his board or a worse board? You would be much more likely to uh, to make the play. Let's give him a blot in his board. With a blot in his board, I'm much more interested. Uh, it isn't so bad if I get hit, if I make the, the suicide play hit. And it's probably, well, it's still got to be wrong because you're giving up such a good point. And again, um, you still got to make this point. So you're a long way once you could, if you can make this anchor from hitting. But play with it some and you'll see it. Uh, okay, so maybe some of you learned something. Maybe some of you who are honest enough to admit that you wouldn't have even considered the hit in the original position would now cons at least consider it and look at it. Uh, in the future and weigh the odds of the two. What I did by looking at the next roll is basically MCV, most common variation. I'm looking at what's likely to happen on the next roll and when you hit there's only two things we care about. Does he hit back or not? Now you need to take it one more step if you're not familiar with this play. You need to see what really happens after he doesn't hit you. Do, are you really a big winner here? What hurts you here? What, are, what kind of rolls do you have now? What kind of shape are you in now? Again, we can look at dice distribution, and you'll see that uh, you're in really, really good shape with most rolls. You do have to ask yourself, though, how you're going to play the rolls. For example, if you roll the two on the next roll, are you covering the ace point, or are you covering the three point if he danced? For, so you need to understand how you're going to play this game. What do you think? Do you think you cover the, let's say you rolled a, a two four again. How would you play a 2-4? Would you move this 2 or this 2? You know, it's tough. I think I'm covering the ace point with almost all 2s. I can't imagine covering, uh, giving him the one shot with this good a board. If his board was much worse, I'd probably make the 3 point. But let's find out, first of all. Ooh, I'm wrong by 0 0.012. Let's plus plus it. Now I'm wrong by 1%. So I would have covered the wrong point and made a 1% error. I learned something. I got to study this. I learned that I got to study it a little bit more. I'm not embarrassed to make a. In fact, I'm not embarrassed when I make 8% errors. I make them. I'm not, just not that good uh, to where I won't make these kind of errors. But the point is, either way, you're a pretty you're in pretty good shape. Um, with most of your rolls. How many rolls do you not cover one of them? I guess uh, sixes appear to be a problem. A six what though? Six four covers the ace point with this checker. Six five covers this point. Six three is a problem. Uh, six two covers and six one. Uh, six one covers the ace point. So you really don't have too many really horrible rolls there. Fours cover from there. Twos cover here. Threes look like they could be a problem, depending on what's with them. But again, let's save some time. Go to dice distribution, and you'll see that you've got some jokers, five, four, and double six. Well, double six. 
uh, one, two, three. Hits and covers this point. That's why that's such a big joker. Five, four covers both these points. So those are your two jokers. Uh, six, two uh, covers and comes out. Again, four, four is your only horrible, horrible roll. I mentioned six, three as being pretty bad. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It's just not great. Uh, how would you play a 6-3? <sighs> Why a 6-3? What would you do with a 6-3? Hmm. I guess you make this point so that you've got an anchor if you get hit. Yeah, I guess that's what I would do. Let's find out. It's really important to know how to play these roles. I don't see much else you can do with 6-3 than make this point. Let's find out. Yeah, you make that point, and it's still a pretty bad roll, but at least you've anchored and so that if he hits you, you don't have more checkers you can go after, and you just need to come in with one checker. I hope this was interesting and helpful for you, and uh, again, be thinking about when you do the banana split, suicide split plays. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.